Good afternoon. This is Zach Culver from the Kentucky Employee Assistance Program with today's wellness break. The need to gather as much information as possible is our neurological default. We are programmed to survive and we understand on a fundamental level, even if we aren't conscious of it, that the gathering of knowledge is key. However, the advancements in technology are increasing the flow of information faster than our brains can process it, resulting in overload and distress. We continue to worry even beyond the point that information is received because we are trying to comprehend it and figure out how to use it to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Unfortunately, constantly thinking about dangers keeps our fight and flight system online and that's not good for our health. Often, problem solving and the confidence it produces comes when we get some distance from the issue itself. Similar to when you rack your brain all day without success, then get the answer when you're walking the dog or chopping up vegetables for dinner. Give your brain a break from the information overload and worry. Trust me, it's not going anywhere. Train yourself how to be deliberate about when you problem solve, and just as importantly, when you try to distance yourself from the chaos. Sometimes developing a worry list can be beneficial because it forces you to get that distance by writing down what you're anxious about. Get it out of your head and down on paper. You can divide your list into two sections, things you can do something about and things you can't. For the list that is actionable, start developing a plan about steps you can take so that when you cross them off, you can get that sense of control. For those things that you cannot do anything about, then coming to a level of acceptance is a goal and a really, really, really hard one. To come to acceptance about those things that you cannot change is one of the most difficult tasks any human can face. Don't face it alone. Call your supports, reach out to people via FaceTime or Skype or other digital social platforms to discuss those issues. If you're already, if you're already seeing a therapist, continue to see them. Ask about online options now that many of the insurance companies are changing their requirements to cover telehealth during this difficult time. Or call us at Keep, and we can help you connect to the online psychology service that is free for state government employees. And as always, if you're not ready to start a formal therapy practice, you can always reach out to us for confidential support during this challenging time. Once your worry list is complete, walk away from it. Stop rehashing those concerns because compulsively thinking about it is not going to help you develop a solution that you couldn't have come up with when you were developing your list. That is the brilliant thing about this strategy. You're training your brain to be deliberate about worry for a short period of time. I recommend about 20 minutes a day, every day at the same time. Just make sure you don't develop your list right before bed. And every time you find your mind needing to worry or look up the status of the outbreak, just remind yourself that you've done it for the day and you will do it again at some predetermined time the next day. And then you will do it again the following days after. How do we help slow down the worrying mind in order to let this system take hold? Well, that's where this next exercise comes into play. And this uses the diaphragmatic breathing we discussed in our first session to break out of our automatic worry and anchors us to the present moment instead of engaging with the anxiety of the future and what all this COVID-19 mess means for us. It provides us with a method to put the brakes on that kind of rumination and forces us to shift perspective from thoughts as our reality and instead to thoughts as mental events that can just come and go. Just because we have a thought about something doesn't mean it's going to happen. If we see these thoughts as just an occurrence in our mind, then we're less apt to feel the emotions that can arise from the brain struggle to differentiate between what's real and what's in our imagination. If I tell you to imagine biting into a big juicy lemon, 
and really commit to engaging with that act and the image. And what happens? Your mouth begins to salivate and probably begins to pucker. It's the same engaging with and giving our worries life. Those worries result in stress, even if the bad thing never comes to pass. Mark Twain said it best when he wrote, some of the worst things in my life never even happened. So let's see how to work on being aware of your thoughts as events of the mind and then shift to anchoring in the present moment where you are probably a lot safer. So to begin with, I would like you to assume an erect posture while seated. This needs to be very different from if you were lounging and watching TV. If you could imagine that your head is a balloon and your spine is a string and your head is bringing your body to attention. And it's the notion that we want to make this a deliberate exercise. And once you do it enough, your brain will switch into this mode and be more receptive to this type of exercise every time you assume that position. Close your eyes and then focus your awareness on the content of your mind, acknowledging those inner processes and making sure to pay attention to your thoughts. And by paying attention, all I want you to do is to note them. And as best as you can, recognize them as mental events. Sometimes it can be helpful to label. That thought is a fact about my current situation or a worry or a need, but there's no need to problem solve that particular thought or make a judgment about why they are there. Just recognize that that is where your brain is because it's its job to think. But remember, there's no need to interact or problem solve with these thoughts or these worries because you'll do that again when it's time to revisit your worry list. Just notice thoughts, observe them. Inevitably, there may be feelings that come with the thought. Nervousness, anger, sadness. Don't ask why it's there. Don't try to make it go away. In fact, I encourage you to turn towards any discomfort and acknowledge that unpleasant experience. Now that you've in effect gotten out of the autopilot, that is your thinking, and are attending to your thoughts more deliberately, turn your focus to the process of breathing. And the rhythmic movement of your abdomen. Attending fully to the expanding of your stomach on the in-breath. and the fall as you exhale. Use this natural and ever-present action as a way to connect with the current moment. As you breathe in, through any discomfort that came with acknowledging your thoughts and feelings. 
and then releasing that through your exhale. We've moved our attention to this rhythmic process and if your mind begins to wander, just notice it and bring it back to your breathing as you take slower and deeper breaths. Now allow the spotlight of your attention to widen as it encompasses your entire body. On the next in-breath, picture oxygen entering your lungs and expanding out to the rest of your body. Sense everything as a whole, including your orientation in space, and your position in your chair. Be aware of any tension or discomfort. Shift and narrow your awareness to that spot of discomfort by breathing into it. You can even imagine it softening, becoming more open as you exhale. There are no such areas of discomfort, then allow your awareness to migrate to areas of heat or cold. And if there are no extremes, just be aware of the presence of nothing. When you're ready, end that focus and open your eyes. This exercise is a great quick way to use the breathing we discussed to dial back the fight or flight response and ground you to the present while reassessing that anxious mental chatter. It can be done in less than five minutes or so and helpful when you find yourself unable to get out of the worry loop or any time that you are feeling stressed by what is going on in your mind. And what do we do when we're not worrying? Live in a way that you value. Engage with your family. Be present moment with those that you are housebound with or communicating with via technology. Don't be staring at your phone for constant updates. Be directly in contact with the person that you're deliberately interacting with. When at work, focus on the job and reap the benefits of the contentment the brain experiences when it's able to attend completely. Recognize the importance of the work that you are doing for the Commonwealth. As always, please reach out to us at Keep with any questions or for further support as you do that important work. We are here for you and want to join with everyone who is seeing this as an opportunity to come together as we work to cope with this unprecedented event. Join us again tomorrow for our next session. Thank you again for your service and stay safe.